Now, I saw many of you with notepads. If you've got one and you've got a pen, we are going to roll up our sleeves tonight and go to work. I'm not here just to get you all excited about life and have you go back home and Monday the same stuff happens. This is about change. If you don't like where things are right now and you'd like circumstances to be different, we must change us, right? And that's going to begin with our own thought processes. So let's go to work. I want to take you back to a time. It was 1988. Ramon and I were enjoying an amazing life. We lived at 4955 Alzada Drive. You can go there right now in La Mesa. It's a beautiful home with a portico share, circle drive, tennis court, swimming pool. And out front was parked a 40-foot Bluebird custom motor home. Garage was full of exotic cars. It was a wonderful life. Full-time housekeeper, full-time gardener. Great, huh? But the economy was changing. I was developing real estate, large apartment complexes. And for about the previous year, it was like everything was going through my fingers like water. I couldn't stop it. And by 1989, we had lost basically all of our assets, except for what we could load in two rider trucks. And we had a million dollars of debt on our back. Does anybody feel that way? I'm not sharing this to go, wow, mine was worse than yours. That's not the purpose of this. It's all relative, because everything's everything, isn't it? Everything's everything. And as I've been lying in bed late at night and early, early in the morning, thinking about this very moment in time, I felt very inspired to go to a very specific place with you. Because I know in the darkest of those dark nights, and there were some dark nights, we got to a point in that process where it seemed like the only solution was my life insurance policy. That was it. Seven kids, a million dollars. I'm paying $50 to each one of these creditors. One's $365,000. One of them is $57,000. I mean, 50 bucks. How long is this going to take? I'm not going to live this long. But the life insurance policy would solve all of that. And I got to that point. I talk about this occasionally, but not often, because it's a little painful. But I am finding that more and more people are at least in that kind of a dark night. That's the truth of it. We all look great, but when I spend time in people's lives and find out what's really going on with their relationships and their finances, it is not what they planned. This is not the way it was supposed to turn out. And we can think about some really crazy things when that occurs. Now, the fact that I spent a few nights writing the note to try to figure this out and got really close, closer than I want to discuss in detail, I just know when the sun came up the next morning, I wasn't relieved, I was angry. And this is what I said. I long to cry to the God of my youth. But the God of my youth will not hear my cry. I must change my God or change my cry. I hope that doesn't offend anyone. But that's where I was. It's like, okay, I surrender. Teach me what's really going on. And from that moment to this, that's exactly what's happened. Was it my God that needed to change? No. It was my cry. Intentional creation. A great relationship. A loving relationship. A successful business. Even a successful employee within a business. Those things are intentionally created. In other words... Whether we're intending it or not, it's being created. What is being created? When we understand creation, we understand that it's a two-stage process. And both are equally important, and they're interrelated. The first is mental creation, and then there is physical creation, two of them. 
When we look at mental creation, it requires vivid visualization. Vivid visualization, a clear vision of where we're headed. So I want you to understand before we begin this process tonight, I'm not against vivid visualization. I'm the greatest proponent of it. But it has to be used very specific for it to be a creation process and not a destructive process. So my mission tonight is to teach you the difference between those two. Would that be okay? So that's really clear to us. So if we've been using it improperly, we can make the shift. It's like, oh, that's why. That's what I want to create tonight. I want to have somebody go, that's why. Okay. Now I can start doing it the other way. Because there are a lot of pundits in the marketplace who want you to believe that there is a fantasy fairy that will magically manifest your wishes if you'll just visualize them with enough intention. In the book, Today I Begin a New Life, I tell the story of a father who went to one of those seminars. He put together a dream board, which I happen to believe in, when it's a destination. I mean a target and not a destination, when this is where we're headed and not a place where I spend my day. But he was spending his day, he was in his easy chair looking at the Ferrari. And he was envisioning himself driving this Ferrari around these mountain roads. And his son walks in. And his son says, what are you doing, Dad? He says, I'm visualizing a Ferrari. Well, what does the son do? Are we getting one? Yes, son, if I could just give me enough time to get my intentions in order, you know, to really think about this. Son kind of looks out in the garage. The only thing out there is a, a rusting Ford Taurus with a Dole for President sticker on the bumper. Okay. And the father says, well, come here. Let me show you how to do this. So the father engages the son. Close your eyes. What do you see? They come to a conclusion. It's red. It's a rag top. It's got a brown interior. Everybody got it? They take it for a spin around the neighborhood. I don't have a license, the son says. You don't need one. Oh, this is cool. So the son's driving the fry around the neighborhood, gets to see the cute girls. <laughs> Isn't this great? Comes back and says, you sure this works, Dad? He's a little incredulous. And his father says, absolutely. Well, a couple hours later, his father's walking by the window and notices the lawnmower out in the front grass. And there's about two swipes. And the lawnmower's just sitting there in the tall grass. That's the son's only assignment on Saturday is to mow the lawn. Where in the Sam blankety blank is my son? Checks on his wife, checks with his daughter, can't find him. Finally finds him in his bedroom, and guess what he's doing? Sitting in his computer chair, visualizing. What are you visualizing, son? The lawn being mowed. Now we know that visualization is not going to mow a lawn, so why do we think it's going to produce a Ferrari? Or as a popular DVD would want you to believe, a Lamborghini. Enough said about that DVD. Because what we've measured is that 98% of the people in this room have a very vivid visualization, a capacity to visualize at a very high level. Your mind is somewhere else. It may not be disciplined yet, but it's somewhere else. And the tendency is to want to escape into the future to a time when the problems have been solved. We're going to spend some time on this tonight, but vivid visualization is critical to creation, and I'll do my very best to share with you how. What are our secret desires? Our real intentions, our why. I'll tell you where you can find it. It's not in our mission statements. Those are sometimes interesting, or our vision statements. The real why is found when you are by yourself in that place where your mind goes free. Now, where does it go? Where does it go? If we can get clear about where it goes then, you'll know what your secret why is. What is it really? Ready? Is it seeking ease? Would it li like life just to be easier? Wouldn't that be great? That's what we say, right? And so when we get by ourselves, often that's where our mind goes. We want life more comfortable. 
no more stress, no more frustration, no more pain. Or I walk over here. Do we want to engage in life? Embrace the principles of creation. Connect and serve others. Create value everywhere we go with everyone we meet and contribute to the world. Can you feel the difference between those two? Ease, comfort, no more stress, no more pain, no more frustration, no more debt. Wow. Versus this. Let's keep moving. Escape or create. This is a night of honesty for us. This is not an indictment. Just after coaching with 3,500 people and doing 4,800 assessment debriefs, using a mathematical science where I can measure exactly how you think. Not what you think, but how you think. The thoughts that are really driving your life. I've discovered that it's a little scary how many of us really do want to escape. And if that has been our why, that is why it's not working. Escape or create, avoid or embrace. Ease or a life of significance. Significance. We mattered. When we leave the planet, we mattered. We did something. We left a footprint on this planet. Can you feel the difference between that? And I just want it easy. I just want it more comfortable. I don't want more stress or pain. Now, I must tell you... <laughs> I could lose you really quickly tonight. I could. Please don't be offended by how I look or what I'm saying. Glean this and let it into your heart just a little bit. Because on that night when I said I longed to cry to the God of my youth, I got to pay a really interesting price. Because 10 years later, the million dollars was paid back. The estate was reestablished. I was given the opportunity to become the CEO of the Og Mandino Group and bring these principles to the world. I also made the promise that night that if I could be shown how to do this, I would spend the rest of my life sharing it with others. That's my life's work for you to know. So please be with me, okay? That's my plea tonight. Now. One of the great risks with vivid visualization is fantasy. I'm going to define it for you. It's a very simple concept. I'm standing in the present, okay? I skip to a time in the future when something has happened. Could be a better job, all my debts are paid off, my ship has come in, I've won the lottery, I built this huge business, whatever it might be, I come right to here. That's not a bad thing. That would be a vision, a dream. But the dream turns into fantasy when I move one step over here and start imagining what it will be like when that happens. What will happen when? What will happen when? Our research reveals something very interesting, which I'll share with you in more detail in a moment is that when your thought processes are so vivid, when you go here, the same brain chemistry and brain circuitry occurs that would occur if you're actually here. They even have a name for it. The neuroscientists call it a mental construct. Anybody here in the construction business, builders? You build something, a foundation, you build the walls, the top, you've constructed this idea. In addition to that, the sympathetic nervous system is releasing norepinephrine. Now, if that were a prescribed drug, it would be a controlled substance. It's very powerful, very powerful. You feel so wonderful. We're over here, then I would pay off my parents' home. We could have tears streaming down our cheeks. We'd buy them a new Lexus, and we imagine driving up with the car and the big red ribbon, and them coming out and, and falling to their knees and weeping and hugging us and holding us and thanking us like they never have before. And, then we, we pay off all the neighbors' houses, and then we pay off our siblings, and then we, because these are all guilt things, just so you know. It's just so we feel better and better about having the money. And after we've solved all the world problems, now we can go get the car we want, and the house we want, and the vacations we want. All the time, our mind is having the same brain chemistry, brain circuitry, 
nor epinephrine. Now, we don't have time tonight to go into too much detail, but this is called a systemic thought. It's a unique one. It processes dualistically, which means all or nothing. All, exactly this way or nothing. Life or death. Black or white, right or wrong. This is a very dangerous thought process to play with. Because just as soon as reality shows up differently, what's the possibility that it will? What's the possibility? 100%. The body, thinking that it's protecting us, goes into an autonomic response. Autonomic means more than automatic. It's something you cannot control. That same sympathetic nervous system was releasing norepinephrine, now releases cortisol. Ever get one of those? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Get that anxious feeling? Well, it's releasing that for a reason. It thinks you're being attacked. And it wants to be able to help you heal the wounds and give you energy. And the cortisol starts consuming the cells of your body. Communicates truly energy exchange when it connects to a cell. There's a lot of, a lot of those receptors in this area That's, and in our shoulders. That's why we feel it there. Now, let's make it even more complicated. Right at the top of your brain stem is a little almond-shaped thing called an amygdala. Flight or fight center. You've heard of that, right? You flee or you fight. That gets activated. And it sends out this little army. They call them fear dendrites. Can you imagine them all marching? They're going up here to your prefrontal cortex. Right here is your empathy, your practical judgment. And it starts giving you the brown out. It's centralizing all the energy in the fight or flight center. So you can flee or fight. You're being attacked. We don't have energy for empathy so you can speak kindly to your wife. We don't have energy for practical judgment so you can make wise decisions. That's not this time. This time is flee or fight. And we are rendered emotionally paralyzed. When you're in one of those moments, if anybody's ever been there, don't raise your hand, but we all know. <laughs> don't the chuckles tell us all? Our hippocampus is also shut down, our memory center. You ever wondered why you just couldn't figure out what to do in that moment? Some of us in those moments have done some things that when those fear dendrites bleed off and the cortisol bleeds off and our empathy reawakens, we go, oh, man, I got damage control. Some of the ugliest battles in marriages occur in those moments. Just know. Is fantasy a good thing? Oh, no. But it's the number one natural default when you've got vivid visualization. We go to a time, ah. Oh, and then we sneak out here just a little bit and we're in fantasy. Just know that when you go here, you'll get spanked. You will. By the baseball battle life. It is inevitable. Now I'll share with you how to come here and then focus on creating the millimeters to get here and create reality. This can inspire you. If you're here for creation, this is what I want to create. This is what I want to have happen in my life. I'm so excited to go back here and do all the work necessary to get here. But if our why is to escape and avoid ease and comfort, I guarantee you we'll go here and we'll play in this little space right here. And this will kill you emotionally and for some even more so. We go into that other space it's called catastrophizing. We start playing out worst case scenarios. We went from sailing in the Caribbean, totally wealthy and not a problem in the world, to we are probably going to be thrown out of our house and be homeless by tomorrow. That's just what happens. Because as far as it can go that way, it can go this way. The greater your ability to do that, the greater your ability to be negative and destructive. Now I've got another one up here called counterfeit pleasure. Since we have some men here tonight, you brought your wives and women who are here, I want to be sensitive. 
but may I say this clearly so it's not misunderstood? Relationships are based on commitment and trust and intimacy. Absolute total commitment builds trust. And the expression of that is intimacy. Intimacy is not a sporting event. It's a glorious, beautiful expression of total commitment and trust. Total surrender and beauty. It can be playful. But you can also weep in each other's arms. It's supposed to be like that. And if we use our mind to visit places that are pornographic, may I just say the word? I can promise you that it will be felt in your relationships. We do not escape the damage from going into that place. This is not a religious discussion. There's plenty of science to tell us what happens. Oh, men, women too, primarily men. Let us be careful where we go. Let us have our mind totally focused on our love. Totally, completely, 100% commitment emotionally, physically, financially, spiritually. That's what creates incredible relationships. If you're having struggles, examine that piece and see if you might go someplace that isn't very healthy. It's just not healthy. First Amendment rights aside, it's not healthy. Okay? Enough said.